Hello, everybody. I apologize for the late video. I have been trying to get one posted, uh, to have at least one posted by Monday morning, um, so you can kind of get started. And then usually I post the rest of them, uh, you know, by the end of the day on Monday. Um, it's kind of the, the schedule that I've, I've come around to here. Um, like I said in my email, I actually recorded an entire video um, that was, you know, like 15 minutes long. And then I, I put it into my, my uh, video editing software. Um, and uh, yeah, I went to play through it and it just had no sound. Yeah, so a, a whole video of me just... Uh, <laughs> with just no sound at all. Uh, terrible. Very, very disheartening. Uh, it made me very sad. Uh, my microphone uh, stopped working. I'm not sure why. And my only guess is uh, I actually cleaned my laptop yesterday, which is something I never do, uh, you know, because that's just the type of person that I am. Um, so I actually cleaned my laptop, uh, mostly because I was procrastinating, I guess. And, you know, I, I sprayed like some of this uh, uh, screen cleaner on it. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that interacted with the microphone. I'm not sure where the microphone actually is um, on my laptop. Uh, <laughs> but at any rate, it seems to be working now, or at least I hope it is um, if you're watching this video. So yeah, let's uh, let's hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure I tested it, you know, before I record uh, entire videos. <laughs> um, okay, so what else is going on? Um, our essay was due on Friday. Our narrative essay um, should have now been handed in. But like I've said before, I do accept all late work um, for anything in the, uh, the course, homework, um, and obviously these essays. I would really focus on this essay. If you uh, find yourself a little behind on work in the class, which, you know, I understand this is a tough semester, um, my priority, um, if I were you, would be the narrative essay. Um, the, if you go back and look at our syllabus, I have the breakdown of the grades. And the essays are the most important thing for your grade. Uh, so there's, um, you know, there's still time to make these things up. Uh, there's still time to catch up. Um, so don't, you know, freak out if you're feeling overwhelmed. Just, you know, make a plan and, and uh, uh, start getting some stuff in and uh, we'll all be fine. Right. Um, and I will also say, as long as you've handed everything in so far, uh, you're doing great with your grade. Um, I'm going to try to get some more grades up. I know I'm a little behind. Um, so those will be coming soon. Uh, but as long as you've handed everything in, you're doing great right now. Okay, so... Unfortunately, uh, you guys are going to be mad at me, <laughs> but, uh, you know, with our late start course, we do need to uh, keep on uh, moving here. Um, hopefully, we get some sense of, you know, making progress through the course uh, as we keep moving. But I am going to start talking about our next essay. Um, I'm not giving you, you know, too much in terms of starting on the essay just yet, but I just want to explain the kind of essay that it's going to be. So like before we did a narrative essay, right, where we had a, a storytelling involved and, and uh, we were making a point by telling a story. Um, this essay we're going to be doing is a literary analysis essay. So uh, maybe this is good because maybe this is something you've done before, something you're more comfortable with. But I kind of like to start with that narrative essay that I think most of us are a little uncomfortable with. Um, just because I think it kind of forces us to break out of uh, whatever kind of you know, like, like rules about writing that have been hammered into us um, over the years, um, especially if, if you're uh, someone who was recently in high school. Um, you know, they, they really just tell us all these different rules and boxes to check. So I think the, the narrative essay um, kind of forces us to break out of that a little bit, which I think is a necessary step um, to writing the best, you know, argumentative essays that we can. So anyway, uh, literary analysis, what is this? Um, we're going to be writing about a short story. We're going to be reading a short story. Um, it's on Moodle. It's up there as homework for next week. Uh, we'll start talking about it next week. It's called Independence Day by Sefi Adda. Um, it is a little bit long, so I would start reading it sooner rather, rather than later. I wouldn't save it all for the day, uh, you know, for Sunday night or something. Um, but I, I, I know it's a little bit long, but I do think that once we start writing our essay, you're going to be glad it's a little bit long because there's uh, more material to work with. There's more uh, uh, evidence and quotes and stuff that you can pull from the story. Okay, so kind of my goal for all of this week, this video, including the assignments and the discussions I have for you, is to try to answer the question, uh, what is literary analysis? What does it mean to write this kind of essay? Uh, uh, what's the point of it? Why do people do it? Um, stuff like this, because I feel like it's really not been communicated to us. I think we've all 
written about um, a book before. I think we've all written about fiction, you know. Um, you, you know, maybe you wrote an essay about Hamlet or Mice and Men or Frankenstein or, or some book like that. Um, but like, what was the point? Like, why, what was the goal of that essay when you were writing it? Why were you writing that essay? I don't think teachers do a good job of explaining what the point of this essay is or what it's supposed to do, you know, like why, um, people do it professionally, like how people can possibly make a living off of writing books about art, you know? Um, and it's not just being like, oh, well, you know, I, I think this is very pretty, um, you know, <laughs> um, and this, okay, so let's get into it. So it's not, so what this assignment is not, it's not just like a book report, right? Um, you might have done a book report before where you basically just summarize what happens in a, in a story. That's not what this is. Um, a literary analysis essay is ultimately a argument essay. We are making an argument. We need to have uh, a thesis that is debatable and that makes an argument about the text. What are we going to be arguing about? Like what message the text sends. Um, this will make more sense once we look at our once we look at our examples. But it's basically like looking at a story and asking like what is it trying to say about a certain topic. Um, this will make more sense if you go and read the sample essay I have up there. Um, but that uh, that's an essay written by a student where they're looking at Pokemon, right, a TV show or, or video game or whatever also. Um, but uh, they're looking at Pokemon and they're saying, they're asking the question, uh, what does Pokemon say about uh, animal rights or animal cruelty? And then their answer to that question is kind of their argument where they say, you know, uh, uh, Pokemon, uh, uh, whatever, uh, is kind of anti-animal rights or something like that. So like that, um, um, I'll talk more about this later, but that I picked as an example because it makes an argument about um, the show, right? An argument about the message the show is sending. And that's fundamentally what a literary analysis essay is. Um, you're free to disagree with the argument in that essay, of course, but it does make uh, the argument. So we're not just summarizing, we're making an argument, but we are gonna have to have some amount of summary in the text, you know? Um, we don't want it to only be understandable to someone who just finished reading uh, the story five minutes ago. So um, you are going to explain certain things that happen in the story. But the way that I would think about it is that I would I would try to include uh, or summarize the parts of the story that help you to make your argument. Um, the things that happen in the story are kind of like your evidence, you know, the things that you're going to use to back up your argument about the story, right? So you should have summary, but you don't need to summarize everything that happens. Um, there might be an important part of the story uh, that just doesn't have anything to do with your argument. You don't need to include that. It's not your job to let the reader know everything that's happened. You can assume that the reader has read the story before, but don't assume that they remember every single detail of the story. You know, don't assume that they just read it. Assume they read it, you know, maybe a month ago. <laughs> um, so you want it to be understandable to someone who doesn't remember every single detail. So you have some summary. But ultimately, your goal is to make an argument. So the summary should only exist in relation um, to the argument. Uh, okay, a few other things I want to address about what is maybe annoying about literary analysis and how we can think about it better. I think maybe um, in, in, a, in a lot of classes, like definitely in high school and stuff, there's kind of a sense when it comes to reading fiction um, that there is like one correct interpretation, that there's only one uh, right understanding of a piece of art. Um, and usually, you know, with some teachers, it'll be their understanding, right? Uh, you, you'll read a poem, you'll watch a movie, you'll read a story, and they'll say, okay, here's what it means. And you're supposed to be, oh, okay, that's what it means. <laughs> um, I think this is bad. I think this is very harmful. Uh, and I don't think it's true to, to what art kind of is, you know? I don't think that there's just one, uh, you know, truthful, correct, ultimate answer uh, to the meaning of a text. Um, I think that there are going to be multiple arguments, and what makes one better or worse depends on the evidence that they have. So, you know, some people might find one argument more convincing just because they're, uh, you know, they're different evidence that they're looking at. So um, these are arguments like where there can be multiple readings of the text, and you're arguing that that yours is, is you know, one correct reading or, or uh, one important reading or one way to look at it, and uh, you have evidence for that, but it's not necessarily the only one. Um, but the opposite, like, it's also incorrect, I think, to say, oh, well, you know, with art, everyone just has their opinion, you know, 
and it's just it's whatever you want it to be it's it's all perspective it's all subjective um i've heard students say it's a you know it's it's your opinion uh man um <laughs> And I, I don't think that's the right way to look at it either, you know, because I think we have to have evidence to back it up. Um, it's kind of like when I have a problem with uh, uh, some of this overly symbolic readings, right, where people see, oh, well, well, the color green is mentioned here, and we all know uh, green's the color of money, so they must be uh, talking about uh, this character's greedy or something. I think we all know that that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> so I don't want to say that every interpretation is valid. So it's, it's not that there's one correct one, but it's also not that any opinion uh, we have is automatically as good as any other opinion. You know, not all opinions are uh, uh, created equal. Um, some opinions are backed up by evidence, you know? So uh, you need to have evidence from the text. And as I'll talk about in um, a, another video, um, we also are gonna be trying to do uh, some research here. So you might have some outside sources to, to use as evidence as well. Um, but yeah, you can have an argument that this agrees with the things that I say, for sure. You could take the total uh, opposite of the things that I say. <laughs> you just gotta have, you know, the evidence to make it a solid argument and, uh, you know, still make a, a good paper and have a good grade and everything like that. Um, okay, one more thing here. Um, uh, another thing that, that I think has been annoying about uh, maybe doing literary analysis is that I think some people focus too much on the author's intention, you know? Like, um, I, I've heard this from students before, where we'll read a story or, or like the, the Pokemon essay or the, the episode of SpongeBob that I'm having you watch this week. And the students will say, oh, well, I don't think the people who made uh, SpongeBob were trying to do that. I don't think that they meant to put that there. And, you know, I, I, I just don't know how much we have to care uh, about what the author meant to do, you know? I prefer to approach it, and, and there's reasons for this, and there's essays that I could direct you to um, for why I think this. Um, and there is kind of a theoretical background to this, but I think that it's more important to focus on the reader uh, when we're talking about art or the viewer or whatever, the person consuming the thing and how the story affects the reader. I think that's what we should focus on analyzing, not what the author was trying to do. Because at the end of the day, we're not inside the author's head. You know, we don't know what they were trying to do. And, and even if they say that's what they were trying to do, how do we know if, you know, if they really mean that? Um, so I don't think there's any surefire way to know why an author is doing something and i just don't think it's ultimately that interesting to know what they want to do like who are they you know like well, why are they such a big deal like oh, oh so, sorry author like you know you you think you're better than me author <laughs> um i think we are just as incapable of of uh analyzing a text as the author is um i i think and if you've ever created art I, I think that it's true that a lot of uh, authors don't really even know what they're doing, you know, or they don't have specific intentions. But I don't think that that means that we can't read the work and say, well, here's the message it's sending, regardless of whether or not the author uh, meant to put it there. Um, so that's kind of my position on it. I've heard people argue against this, but like, just to give a quick example, um, I remember hearing that, that J.K. Rowling, the, um, the author of uh, the Harry Potter books, uh, after the books were written, she, like, tried to say that uh, certain things about the characters, like, like that Dumbledore uh, is supposed to be gay. And th that would be fine, right? That's sure, whatever, have him be gay. Um, but she's not in the text, right? Like, she didn't actually write anything in the story to tell you or, or to, to make that known to the reader, you know? So, like, when she just comes out after the fact and says that, it's like, okay, well, do I have to listen to that because she's the author of the book? Like... I don't know. It's in the, like the book is the thing is, 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 is I think what, where I come uh, from it, that the, the piece of art is the thing. I'm not trying to get inside this, you know, this person who, who's probably been dead for years in a lot of cases, <laughs> trying to get in their head and figure out what they're doing. Um, so I don't even think we need to focus too much on that. Um, okay. So what we're doing here is making an argument, right? We're not just pointing out a theme like you might have uh, seen before, like like uh, sometimes in, in high school, they'll, they'll say, we'll, we'll read like Edgar Allan Poe or something. And they'll be like, oh, the theme of death here, death is a theme. And it's like, that's not like, yes, that's true. Like, yeah, absolutely it is. He always keeps talking about getting buried alive. Um, but uh, it's not like an argument, you know? So we're gonna try to make an argument about the message. Um, so again, for our essay, we're gonna be reading um, Independence Day by Sefi Atta. I'm gonna have some suggested topics. I'll try to get the assignment sheet posted as soon as I'm able to. Um, but I'll have some suggested topics on there. Um, and there's going to be a few different ways we can read the story. Um, 
So yeah, you might want to start reading that soon because our next essay is going to be about that story. I am requiring that you write about that story specifically, um, but I'm going to give you some options in terms of the argument you want to make. Um, so yeah, literary analysis, that's what we're doing next. We'll talk more about it later.